This slide shows the checking of the slenderness ratio of a column bending about 1 axis. A column is considered a short column when its slenderness ratio is less than the slenderness limit. When it is more than or equals to the limit, it is considered as slender. The lambda is equals to the effective length divided by the radius of gyrations. The equations of radius of gyrations is given here, which is the square root of the second moment of inertia and the effective area of the column. As for the effective length, there are three methods to determine the effective length. Eurocode in clause 5.8.3.2 gave a general definition of the effective length. Depending on the end conditions, the effective length varies. It is graphically represented in the Eurocode. For both end pin, the effective length will be equal to the height of the column. While for cantilever column, it will be two times the height of the column. When one end is fixed while the other end is pinned, it is considered as 0.7L. Alternatively, the effective length may also be determined from the equations. There are equations for braced structures and equations for unbraced structure. The equations for the braced structure is more straightforward. The K1 and K2 represent the relative flexibilities at N1 and N2. As for the unbraced structures, a larger value of these two equations is used. The K is determined from the stiffness of the column divided by total stiffness of the beam as given in these equations. The stiffness is determined in the function of EI per L. The K should theoretically be greater than 0 0.1. You may also determine the effective length of the column by referring to BS at 110. Table 3.19 is meant for brace column, while Table 3.20 is meant for unbrace column. For the brace column, the conditions there are 1 to 3. As for the unbrace column, there are 1 to 4 conditions. This column represents the conditions at top while well, these columns represent the condition at bottom. The number within here are meant for beta. The beta is a ratio that to be multiplied with the height of the column. This slide outlines the definitions of the condition 1 to condition 4. Condition 1 refers to the monolithic joint which is moment resistance with the beam depth at least greater than the width of the column. It can be used on the connections between beam and column and also the column and foundation. It represents a good rigid conditions of the joint. Conditions 2 refer to a monolithic joint which is moment resistance but the thickness of the beam or slab is less than the width of the column. The degree of rigidity is not as good as conditions 1. As for conditions 3, it is referring to the pin joint between the beam and the column. 
where the column at the end is not specifically designed to provide resistance to the rotations. However, the column itself provides some nominal restraint. Lastly, conditions for referring to the column pin joint and also no rotational restraint at the column. With that, the effective length can be determined and the slenderness ratio of the column can be calculated.